Welcome to the press briefing for COVID-19. On stage, we have uh, Dr. Choi Takin, Under Secretary for Food and Health. Dr. Albert Al, Principal Medical and Health Officer of the Communicable Disease Branch of the CHP, and also uh, Dr. Larry Lee, Chief Manager of Hospital Authority, Dr. Choi. Good afternoon, everyone. As at yesterday, i.e. the 2nd of March, we had already recorded over 218,000 cases of uh, COVID in the fifth outbreak. Since the start of the fifth outbreak, over 920 persons have died of COVID. The Department of Health has analyzed the first 527 deaths from COVID, and our conclusion is over 91 percent of them have not received two doses of vaccine. Vaccination is highly effective in preventing serious conditions and even death, and uh, in this round of outbreak, the elderly and children are more uh, affected and it's most urgent for these two groups to be vaccinated. The government has, through various means, make it more convenient for them to be vaccinated and is preparing uh, to set up community vaccination centers uh, for um, corona Coronavac for children, adolescents, and the elderly. Now we will continue our risk-based testing strategy so as to achieve early detection, early isolation, and early treatment. As for early identification, uh, we will continue to provide pre-testing services for specific high exposure groups, and we will um, continue to have our community testing centers and mobile testing stations to provide free testing services for people who volunteer to be tested. And we'll continue to target uh, put high-risk buildings under our R&T operations. With the strong support of the central government, the uh, SL government has purchased a large volume of RAT kits. And at different locations of Hong Kong, we are giving out free uh, kits uh, We uh, to uh, areas that return positive under the sewage surveillance scheme and to cleansing workers and also property management staff. And as for treatment, we will continue to collaborate with the Chinese medicine sector and hospital authority and to uh, use the uh, strength of Chinese medicine in treatment and prevention. With the strong support of the central government, we've been able to coordinate for Chinese proprietary medicine to arrive in Hong Kong. So far, three types of uh, such medicine have arrived in Hong Kong, and they are Lianhua, Qingwen, Jiaonang, Jinghua, Qinggan, Keli, and uh, Huaxiang, Zhengqi. And we are now giving out these proprietary medicine to different people, to those in need through different channels, uh, through community organizations, and we're also uh, giving them to people who are in community isolation facilities and also uh, residents who are under RT and operations in the past few days. And we're also asking our Chinese medicine clinical and treatment and research centers in all 18 districts to distribute such medicine. Now, the uh, pandemic is really serious, and our healthcare and public services system are under unprecedented challenges. According to the Department of Health, among uh, the uh, confirmed cases, the ratio of symptomatic and asymptomatic cases are in the ratio of 2 to 1. And according to research overseas, uh, a larger proportion of uh, patients are suffering from uh, the Omicron variant do not have any symptoms. And therefore, Omicron is more transmissible in communities. So I urge members not to go out unnecessarily and avoid cross-family gatherings. And please observe anti-epidemic measures. Now I'd like to talk about the supply of food. Recently, we have uh, seen an increased demand for food and also panic buying. As the chief executive has said a number of times, and also press releases by the government, our supply of fresh produce is, say, is stable, and there is no need for uh, panic buying. In fact, uh, the central government has stressed time and again that there should be adequate supply of food to Hong Kong and the Guangdong province and the Shandong municipality have um, 
coordinated with our government, and we have now a few new routes of transport by rail and by sea, and also enhance our land transportation route to ensure stable supply of vegetables, fruit, and daily necessities. They will be supplied to Hong Kong continuously. As said yesterday, now the um, amount of vegetables and chilled poultry arriving in Hong Kong have restored to the normal level. There were uh, over 2,400 tons of vegetables, 160,000 chilled poultry, and there was a record high import of chilled pork, and uh, the supply was 1.9 times of our normal level. As for the Shangshou slaughterhouse, thanks to the uh, assistance from skilled workers from the mainland, uh, the slaughterhouse is now preparing to resume business as soon as possible, and the Chunwan slaughterhouse uh, will um, resume service when situation permits. Now, according to the industry, we have enough stock of rice to last for one month of, for the whole tech tree and uh, three months of uh, frozen meat for the whole of Hong Kong. And we have also communicated with major supermarket chains, and they will uh, deploy enough manpower to refill shelves. And to ensure supply of goods. Uh, to put it simply, we will have a continuous supply of fruit produce and uh, there is no need to hoard. Now, while we are at the height of the epidemic, we must um, unite and uh, with the support of the government and also staunch support of the government, we can win uh, in this fifth wave. Good afternoon, uh, members of the public and uh, media friends. I'm now going to report the number of cases uh, reported yesterday. Yesterday, uh, 50 6,827 cases were reported, including 5,434 cases um, confirmed in the HA and 2,602 cases reported and confirmed by the public uh, services laboratory. The remaining um, 48,791 cases were confirmed by private laboratories. Only two cases were imported. 56,825 cases were locally imported. During the fifth wave, the accumulated infection number is 337,926 uh, cases. In terms of um, gene analysis, yesterday we have performed a gene genome sequencing for 2,602 uh, samples. We have not discovered any samples with L452R uh, strain. 1,724 cases uh, were tested negative to uh, L452 hour strains, it means that they are probably Omicron cases. 465 cases are still pending, and 413 samples um, are unconfirmatory because of the low viral load. In terms of uh, care homes and hospitals, yesterday um, an additional 37 care homes uh, have seen infection, including 21 RCHEs and 16 uh, residential care homes for persons with disabilities, involving uh, 566 cases. 434 cases are residents, and 132 cases are staff members. The care homes uh, distribution, um, three in Hong Kong Island, five uh, in Kowloon, 14 in uh, Kowloon East, and 15 in uh, New Territory uh, West, or 14 in New Territories uh, East. So far, uh, some 710 uh, care homes have been infected in this wave, involving all, um, altogether 4,100 4, uh, residents and some 1,300 staff members. Now, um, on the 26th of December, the FEHB issued a press release on the discharge condition or the condition for ending quarantine for confirmed patients uh, and the close contacts at home. Now, I would like to uh, make a supplement because uh, there are many uh, inquiries and, um, and um, uh, questions about the uh, condition. Now, for a person tested positive on a PCR test or a RAT kit, then the sampling day would be day zero. If um, he is fully vaccinated with two doses, then on the sixth or seventh day, if a RAT uh, return negative, it means that the viral load is low and um, he is close to recovered, and uh, the infection risk is very low. He will not be infected 
again, so he can uh, resume normal life. Subsequently, if any family members or household members are tested positive, it will not affect the um, date uh, of uh, ending quarantine. That is uh, the uh, the negative uh, RAT sample on the sixth or seventh day. For a household close contact, the clock will start on the sampling day of the family member. That is day zero. On the sixth or seventh day, if the family member is fully vaccinated with two doses uh, on a negative test, he or she can resume a normal life. However, if another household member test positive subsequently, then the home isolation day will count um, anew. Then um, on the sixth or seventh day on the negative test, um, he can, be, uh, he can uh, resume normal life as well. Now, um, Dr. Lee, please. In the hospital authority, uh, we have uh, 6,698 uh, patients in uh, our public hospitals, North Lantau Infection Control Center, our uh, CHP's Infection Control Center, and the AWE treatment facility. In the Penny Bay um, is uh, isolation facility, we have 720 patients. As at um, last night, we have reported uh, 78 patients in critical condition. Among them, 52 um, have not been vaccinated at all. And uh, 116 patients are in serious condition. Uh, among them, 64 are not vaccinated. As at uh, 12 a.m. today, in the past 24 hours, 144 patients passed away because of the COVID. Six, uh, 85 males and 59 females, uh, ranging um, from 42 years old to 102 years old. 56 patients uh, were from uh, residential care home. Uh, 124 uh, have no vaccination record. 10 received two doses and uh, 10 received uh, one dose. Among the 144 deceased patients, uh, 134 were elderly people above age 65. There are eight patients who passed away who are of a relative young age. First, a 44-year-old male. He, li he lived in a care home. He has a chronic disease and he is not. Um, he, uh, he has a reduced mobility. On the, 20th, on the 27th, um, he was sent to the Cuomo Hospital. He had a fever and had shortness, shortness of breath. He was given intubation and he passed away on the, in the morning of uh, the 2nd of March. The second one, the second patient uh, was a 42-year-old um, male. He, is a he was a patient uh, in the uh, Siu Lam uh, Psychiatric Hospital. He was a person with disability. After infection, he was sent to the uh, medicine ward. He passed away in the morning of, on the morning of the 2nd of March. The third patient was a 56-year-old uh, female. She was a care home resident. In the afternoon of the 23rd of February, he, uh, she was sent to the um, North District Hospital because of shortness of breath and fever. She was hospitalized, and then after treatment, uh, she uh, passed away in the mo on the morning of the 2nd of March. The fourth patient, a 57-year-old uh, female uh, with a cancer uh, background, on the 1st of March in the afternoon, she uh, was sent to the Prince of Wales Hospital on a fever. Uh, she was hospitalized and passed away on the, mor on the morning of the 2nd of March. The fifth patient was a 51-year-old female. She had cancer. On the 26th of February at night, she approached uh, the ANED of uh, Changwano Hospital. Her situation uh, deteriorated and uh, she um, was confused, and then uh, sh she passed away um, on the 2nd of March in the medicine ward. The sixth patient, uh, a 54-year-old uh, male with no um, uh, medical history, uh, he received uh, one dose of vaccine on in January. On the 22nd of February, uh, he tested positive on the RAT, and on the 23rd, 
in these small hours, he went to the United Nations hospitals at A&ED uh, with fever and shortness of breath. His situation was bad, and he uh, was found to have a, uh, a pulmonary um, uh, blockage. Uh, he was transferred to ICU and then passed away um, uh, on the 2nd. And then a 52-year-old male with a cancer history. He went to the Eastern Hospital NAED on the 2nd of March. He had a pulmonary, and he passed away in, um, at 2 p.m. And the last patient uh, was a 55-year-old male uh, with disability, uh, a care home resident. He was sent to uh, the Tumu Hospital NAED uh, on the 1st of March because of a low blood pressure and fever. He was uh, transferred to a, an isolation ward and passed away on the 2nd. In, uh, we want to report uh, 42 patients uh, deceased uh, between 24th of February and uh, the 1st of March because of a uh, delay. Uh, they were 26 uh, males and 16 females um, aged uh, between 53 to uh, 108 years old. In the fifth wave, uh, 1,153 uh, people have passed away in, hosp in public hospital, and uh, most of them elderly people. In the uh, in the, past, in the day past, 564 patients have been discharged. Occupancy rate of our, um, of our isolation bed is 88.1%. 60 patients uh, were confirmed uh, uh, on screening, and 130 page, uh, staff members uh, are close contacts. Uh, 2,521 uh, medical, medical staff in HA uh, were infected, and three, some uh, 600 have returned to their uh, positions. Oh my God. Q&A, please identify your organization and please uh, keep your questions short. I'm from Independent Media. I've got three questions. Now, first, uh, the uh, guidelines uh, for uh, vaccination of recovered patients, do they have to take three doses and uh, would there be any exemption for them? Another question is for Dr. Choi. Can you tell us uh, the arrangement of a uh, cut so that uh, people do not have uh, to uh, to hot uh, food from super Marcus. Now, an elderly uh, resident in a care home was sent to uh, AW on the 8th of January, and then uh, he was uh, subsequently returned to his elderly home, and then uh, there was subsequently an outbreak there, and now uh, the elder residents are now stuck in uh, AWE, and they can't even leave uh, their cubicle. Can you um, give us the details, please? First, uh, on cut. Compulsory universal testing. Uh, this uh, was announced by the government uh, earlier on, and it was a very important means to uh, help us to achieve uh, the uh, zero infection policy. Now, because uh, this is a major operation and the whole uh, territory will be involved, and therefore planning must be very carefully done. Uh, the C has said that it must be uh, very thorough, very efficient, and must be done within a very short period of time. We understand that there may uh, be some uh, restriction on uh, movement of members of the public. So we have to uh, plan very carefully uh, the extent and also the details. So there must be careful deliberation before uh, the move, the operation can be launched. Understand that the community very naturally want to know more about the major operation and the government will, when all the details are confirmed, uh, announce to the public and give the public sufficient time to uh, do preparation on this basis. And then, in the past few days, the government has announced that with the assistance of the uh, mainland, we must have a sufficient and stable supply of fresh produce. And uh, the supplies will be sent to Hong Kong by sea, by rail, and uh, by road. And there is no need to um, engage in panic buying and to hoard up food. Uh, vaccination for uh, patients, uh, for ex-patients. Well, uh, under the CHP, we have uh, the joint 
committee, scientific committee, and also advisory panels for the CE. Uh, from time to time, uh, they uh, review latest scientific evidence in deciding um, the number of uh, doses to be taken and also the time uh, gap between two doses. The uh, joint scientific committee will uh, review the actual circumstances and see whether uh, the uh, third dose uh, has to be advanced. When the Joint Scientific Committee has uh, evidence, I'm sure there will be a discussion and a decision. Next. Uh, what about Asia World Expo. I think uh, the uh, isolation facilities for the elderly uh, is very different from our community isolation facilities, and that is uh, being taken care of by the SWD, and I don't have any information. I'm from uh, Orange News. A question for the hospital authority. The uh, Chinese uh, University plans to provide 24 beds for uh, COVID patients. I'd like to know the criteria for transferring COVID patients to uh, the um, hospital run by Chinese University. Now, I uh, understand that public hospitals have got uh, freezers uh, to uh, store uh, corpses. I'd like to know the number of uh, such freezers ordered. Mainland experts have arrived in Hong Kong for a few days. I'd like to know after exchange with uh, our own people, uh, do they have any uh, recommendations or advice for us, please? The um, Chinese University Hospital, they have intention to receive some COVID patients to relieve our pressure and uh, preliminary they plan to provide 24 beds as regards the details and patients to be admitted uh, is still under discussion. We hope that uh, the operation can start soon, but um, we believe uh, patients with mild symptoms will be included. Now, we are grateful to the Department of Health and FUHD uh, for expediting the transfer of uh, corpses to uh, our public mall. Now, as for freezers, uh, we have got a few dozens. Our suppliers will install them in public hospitals as soon as possible. I believe uh, some public hospitals have already uh, received um, such a freezers. Dr. Choi, mainland experts include uh, experts in epidemiology, uh, in epidemiology and also some in treatment. Uh, the exchange process is still in progress. They have very close uh, liaison exchange and visits and discussions. After uh, the um, process is uh, complete i'm sure they will um hear from will hear from them uh, new measures next question i'm from cable tv now for the 54 year old who passed away he was not uh, he did not have any history of uh, chronic illnesses now could it be uh, some uh, underlying disease like uh, obstruction of pulmonary uh, artery. Is it a common disease and is it related to COVID at all? As said by Dr. Choi, uh, there is no confirmed timetable for cut yet. But uh, there is news that uh, close to 500 testing points uh, will be uh, set up. Will it be uh, like polling station arrangements for electrical elections? Uh, can uh, members of the public uh, go to another district for uh, testing? And it is suggested that uh, there more than one sample can be uh, mixed together for PCR tests to boost uh, the testing capacity. I'd like to know uh, whether the government uh, is minded to accept uh, this mixed uh, PCR testing method. And as for uh, our AT kits, there are different uh, types available and brands available in the market. While the government uh, website has uh, listed a few, but there are many information from overseas websites. Would the government tell us specifically RAT kits that are certified or acceptable for use? According to some manufacturers, uh, when there is the CE logo, that means uh, uh, the brand is um, accredited uh, by uh, 
EU. Uh, can you confirm whether that's the case so that people can uh, be more confident in using these? And as for uh, cut arrangements, will there be barrier-free access uh, for persons with disabilities? Now, for the 54-year-old man, he was suffering from uh, diabetes and uh, hypertension. But then he was uh, much better. Uh, he was able uh, to uh, do his self-care, and he was comparatively more healthier. He arrived at the A and E department of uh, United Christian Hospital. He had he was presented with fever and shortness of breath. Of breath, his uh, condition was not good, and. Uh, on examination is found to have obstruction of his pulmonary artery and then he was um, then uh, admitted. Whether his condition was related to COVID, I um, don't have further information now. Regarding uh, cut details, I think uh, the uh, reporter asked uh, for really operational details. I'm sure that's close to the heart of uh, the public, but I have no more to add at this moment. When the details are finalized, I'm sure the government will uh, announce, make announcements. As for mixing PRC samples, PCR samples, I think uh, the Department of Health can supplement later. Now, I, in the whole testing process, whether we all talk about sampling and uh, laboratory analysis, all methods have their pros and cons, and the methodology to adopt would depend on the whole uh, uh, workflow. Dr. Ao, there are a number of um, different brands of RAT in the market. We advise caution uh, when procuring RATs. You should procure um, those brands uh, with good um, reputation and track record, and also you should strictly follow the instructions in the kits um, to arrive at a reliable result. RAT kits are a kind of uh, medical appliances. Under the uh, Department of Health, we have a registration system. There is a platform uh, for registration of such products. And there are also um, overseas um, standards on RATs, including uh, standards in the mainland, uh, the National Health Commission, and also uh, the, uh, every, uh, the, um, the uh, European um, Union and uh, the U.S. authorities. The public should buy up to standard products in performing tests. Whether we would use the, we would adopt the uh, mix uh, sampling or mix sample uh, testing um, in the universal community testing, um, well, we will um, uh, discuss it with our experts. The benefit of um, a mixed um, test is that, um, say, if uh, one in five uh, samples is positive, then we will approach uh, the five uh, the, the five um, persons again and um, take sample again. So whether it is an efficient way to um, to perform the uh, mass test, well, it, it depends on the um, number of patients uh, in the community. If um, a high num if um, a high percentage of the community um, are is infected with the virus, then it may not be very effective. So um, um, we have to discuss it with the experts further. Sorry, the speaker is not coming through the mic. So what about the uh, sign, the mark CE? Does it mean that um, it is um, reliable if there is the CE mark? I don't have any information on that. Uh, good afternoon from the SCMP. Can we get an update on the number of people who reported uh, rapid test positive so far on the uh, CHP's current platform for contact tracing? And how many have been counted in the total COVID case tally? Um, and second question is, when's the rapid test uh, registration platform going to be available? And uh, for those rapid, te uh, rapid tests uh, who tested positive, um, on the earlier platform and reported it. Do they need to register again? And is there a risk of uh, double counting? 
Uh, thirdly, has the Department of Health lab seen any mutation in the BA.2 Omicron cases in Hong Kong? Uh, because Professor Lao Yulong uh, said earlier he was worried that uh, a mutation may be the reason for children dying. Thank you. Could you repeat your first question? Uh, so, can you give an update on the number of people who reported uh, that they tested positive on a rapid test on the Department of Health's current platform for contact tracing, and how many of those cases have been counted in the total COVID tally in Hong Kong? Thanks. Okay, thank you for your questions. So far, uh, the, 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 con the number of confirmed cases we announced every day uh, so far do not increase the number of uh, positive tests uh, tested through the rapid antigen test. We will launch an online platform for persons tested positive uh, by rapid antigen test to report their information to us and uh, our information technology colleagues uh, as well as uh, colleagues from the OGO is working on this uh, platform and will be launched uh, in due course. So uh, before the launching of this platform, Currently, all the confirmed cases, uh, we only count the uh, cases tested positive by RT-PCR, but not including the RAT. But uh, we estimate that there might be uh, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people tested positive by RAT, but uh, they, they, we, we could not uh, ob obtain that information at this moment. And according to our uh, communicable disease public interface, uh, some people tested positive. They have reported their information to us through, the, through this online platform up to a few thousands. And we have sent SMS to them to advise them that if they are tested positive by RAT, then they need to observe the, uh, they, they, they need to be isolated at home. And when the online platform is launched uh, in due course, we will send SMS to inform them and request them to submit the information to us. For the mutation, uh, the Public Health Laboratory Services branch has performed the uh, whole genome sequencing on uh, the fatal cases, including a child test, uh, uh, children that die of uh, COVID-19. And it was found that the virus belongs to the main circulating strain of Omicron BA.2 in Hong Kong, and there is no uh, significant mutations that lead to an uh, increased severity. And the Public Health Laboratory Services branch will continue to closely monitor the severe cases and also the fatal cases by whole genome se sequencing to see if there is an emergence of any uh, new strains. But so far, uh, all the results show that the strains currently circulating in Hong Kong is still Omicron BA.2 without any significant mutations. Okay. Our information technology staff colleagues are working on the platform, and uh, it, will, it will be launched in due course when the, uh, the, the, and the work is completed. Okay, one more English question. Um, the one, yes, in gray. Uh, from the Associated Press, could you please provide us an update on the bottleneck in dealing with dead bodies in Hong Kong that you mentioned earlier this Monday? Thank you. I think... Um, the situation is because of the COVID and also the cold weather, and there is an increase in the death. Okay, and uh, after that, um, the logistics of handling the corpse in Hong Kong Public Hospital will be, the, uh, the patients pass away in the emergency department will be kept in the uh, will be kept in the public mortuary, and also the hospital mortuary will be kept the patients pass away in uh, in the in the ward in the hospital ward. Now, because there is a rising number of the patients pass away in the emergency department, and that's why the, the hospital have to use up their own mortuary capacity to hold up some of the cops. And um, the bottleneck will be one, will be the transfer. Second, will be the capacity of the public mortuary as well as the hospital uh, mortuary. So now we have to deal with it with uh, more fri uh, refrigerated container in the hospital. And also, I think uh, Dr. Al mentioned in previous day about uh, how to increase the capacity of the public mortuary. Okay, 
Next question, please. Good afternoon. I'm from Power Daily. Now, Dr. Lee mentioned about the 54-year-old relatively healthy patient who passed away uh, at the UCH. When was he admitted? Uh, was his cause of death um, the pulmonary artery uh, blockage? Is it related to um, COVID? And you mentioned that more than a thousand have passed away during the fifth wave. Did the deceased uh, patients uh, pass away um, uh, rep, uh, more quickly after um, the the onset? And was it because of the uh, delay uh, that they they um, they that there was a delay um, on their behalf as seeking medical assistance? And how many wards will be converted uh, to uh, receive COVID patients? And what about the uh, air exchange rate after the uh, conversion? Now, what about the oxygen supply and oxygen stock um, in the hospital at daily? Is there a shortage of um, oxygen supply? And um, we have received complaints that uh, the Caritas uh, Medical Center has no um, uh, no dedicated ward for a re uh, for patients requiring renal uh, dialysis, and they had to perform that uh, outdoor. Is that true? About the fifty-four-year-old male, he was admitted to the UCH A and E D on the twenty-third uh, of February. Like I have mentioned, the case uh, has been passed on. Uh, to the uh, coroners. So I um, am not in the position to comment on the case. About um, seeking medical assistance uh, at NED, those patients who approach NED, um, some are more urgent, some are not, so I cannot um, uh, comment on any specific case. In terms of ventilation, we are installing um, fans or ventilation um, facilities uh, in the general ward to take in uh, COVID patients. There is not a specific um, percentage, but we will do our best to increase the number to take in serious patients. Installing fans uh, can enhance the uh, air exchange rate. We would um, maximize the air exchange rate plus the fans to ensure that uh, the airflow is uh, inward uh, rather than outward to the corridors. On oxygen supply, because of the surge uh, in cases number, oxygen demand is high. Still, our supply is sufficient. Um, there is no shortage of oxygen tanks uh, in hospitals. On the other hand, some patients uh, are staying in wards uh, with no um, central oxygen um, supply. So uh, we are sorting out the issue. For the Caritas Medical Center, there are two uh, patients requiring renal dialysis. Now we need um, dialysis fluid um, to perform the procedure. The normal practice is the patients would be seen uh, by specialists and uh, the procedures would be performed if necessary. Uh, we, have, uh, we have changed the uh, dialysis fluid for them. Next question. Uh, I don't have uh, such information with me. Uh, the lady on the right. I'm from Tai Kong Pao. Uh, Dr. Choi. Some private hospitals are not willing to admit uh, confirmed patients, and uh, patients may have uh, to pay uh, um, eight eighty to a hundred thousand uh, dollars per day for board for boarding. Uh, what is your comment on that? 
I'd like to know um, what private hospitals you've discussed uh, for admitting uh, these COVID patients and uh, roughly how many beds will be provided and when can the scheme start? And uh, will patients have to be transferred through public hospitals? And uh, will uh, the uh, fees and charges be uh, similar to that of uh, public hospitals? And do patients have uh, to pay a deposit? And uh, do they have to settle the bill uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or uh, when they are discharged? I'll take uh, the first question. There are 13 private hospitals in Hong Kong of a different uh, scale, and the smallest uh, may uh, provide uh, less than 100 beds and the largest uh, over 1,000 beds. They play a very important role in our health care system. Well, in the fifth wave, uh, when uh, there is a tremendous pressure on the public sector, of course, we're pleased to see if the private sector can help, and they can help in many aspects. For instance, they can accept non uh, critical and uh, non confirmed patients from public hospitals to. Um, Make a way to uh, relieve some of our beds, and I understand that some public hospitals are discussing with private hospitals to see if they can accept patients uh, with confirmed patients with milder symptoms, because uh, some patients may just have fever, and uh, they might have done an RAT, and uh, they would like to consult a doctor and uh, get some prescription. And I think uh, such services can be provided by private hospitals. We have discussed with them, uh, depending on their hardware, the uh, age of their buildings, and uh, their infection control measures, they may not be of uh, they may not be of the same uh, standards as public hospitals. Uh, there is a public-private cooperation uh, scheme between the public and private sectors, and perhaps uh, the private sector can accept some patients. The private private hospitals have been uh, helping us. We're grateful to uh, Li Ka Shing Foundation Fund, uh, who uh, which has um, donated to five private hospitals uh, to treat um, cancer patients. Uh, those are suffering from uh, uh, coronal rectal cancer, etc. And then uh, some uh, non-COVID patients requiring rehabilitation uh, services have been transferred. And in the past week, over uh, 70 patients have been transferred to seven private hospitals for treatment. We will continue to liaise with private hospitals. As for uh, COVID patients, as mentioned, the Chinese University Hospital is going to accept uh, these patients. We will work out the details with them later. The gentleman over there. I'm from AM730. Uh, regarding the RAT platform, uh, I'd like to know whether the target date of commissioning is no longer this week. And uh, can you um, expect, uh, can you uh, can you estimate the, um, uh, the flow and uh, the uh, volume of uh, the platform when it's first uh, commissioned. And I'd like to know uh, the uh, whether you have already cleared the backlog of patients at a and &E departments. Now, for our AT kits, you ask us to purchase them from reputable uh, sources. Now, if um, members of the public have already purchased uh, such kit, such a uh, RAT kits, uh, substandard RAT kits, and if uh, they've been tested positive, what should they do? Uh, should they do it again with another brand, or can they just um, uh, move around in the community? And I'd like to know whether you have uh, the number of uh, COVID patients not living, not staying in hospitals. I understand that uh, there 
might be outbreaks in some wards but not announced. I'd like to know the criteria for an outbreak in a ward. And uh, for uh, the medical staff uh, that are there, will they be given an allowance? Because uh, they are also treating COVID patients there as well. Yes, the pressure on our A and departments is very great, and there are patients waiting to be admitted to wards. We are using various means to alleviate the burden on A and E departments. Uh, first, as mentioned, we are opening up new wards as far as possible. Some uh, general wards will be converted to COVID wards. Besides, we will arrange for these patients, if suitable, to uh, suitable community quarantine or isolation centers. For instance, uh, elderly patients will be transferred to uh, AWE, and uh, for healthier uh, patients uh, with mild symptoms, they will be referred to community isolation facilities. I don't have any uh, figures uh, when it comes to COVID patients not staying in isolation wards. The last question, uh, outbreak in wards. Now, is, uh, we have a number of factors to decide uh, whether uh, people are close contacts or not. We consider the prevailing environment, uh, the distance, and also whether procedures were taken. On rapid antigen test, when the platform is launched, um, we don't have an estimation how many people um, will register, but, believe, but, but we believe that the number will be in uh, the tens of thousands or even more. At present, we are confirming cases uh, on PCR tests. Every day, we have more than 50,000 cases. So we believe that um, given the, uh, the um, widespread usage of uh, RAT among um, members of the public, um, there are a high number of people uh, testing positive on PCR. And also um, some two thirds of patients are presented with symptoms. We believe that for people with a mild, milder symptoms or no symptoms, uh, they haven't received a PCR test, but they um, have tested positive on uh, RATs. So we believe that uh, the, um, there will be a high usage um, for the platform, um, more than 100,000. The traffic will be um, very high. So for people who are tested uh, positive on RAT as uh, subsequent to the date announced by the FEHB, and you can also register on the website. After the launch, uh, we will also approach the, um, uh, the patients who are not uh, registered yet. And also we urge uh, members of the public to, um, to report to us once you are tested positive. Currently, our IT colleagues are, are working uh, Food steam to um, prepare for the launch of the website. There are some complicated uh, technical issues uh, that they're dealing with. Since we expect um, a higher uh, traffic for the website after the launch, we uh, hope that uh, there will not be any uh, major uh, technical issues um, causing inconvenience to the public after the launch. We recommend the public um, buying brands of RATs uh, with uh, good rep reputation. Currently, um, the brands available in the market are the major brands, so they should be fine. If you have any doubts on the products, I suggest um, not to, not. Uh, I suggest you uh, not to use the kits and. Um, check the internet to see uh, whether the brand uh, is a reputable uh, reputable brand um, locally and overseas. 
if you if you discover that and the brand is not uh, up to standard after the test, then I recommend you do another test with a reputable brand or do a PCR test to confirm the result. Next question, the lady in white. Hi, I'm from Now TV. According to some members of the public, they have made a, an appointment to get jabbed, but uh, unfortunately, um, they uh, are they are confirmed to be infected. So, are they still uh, suitable to get jabbed? And also, uh, after recovery, uh, will they be uh, will there be a period that they are immune? So, uh, what, how can they fulfill the requirements under the uh, vaccine pass? And also, we know that uh, there is an outbreak um, among prisoners. So, do we have outbreaks in prisons? Is it possible that um, the uh, correctional services um, staff are bringing the virus into the prison? And what guidelines would you, um, what advice would you give um, to the correctional services department? And about uh, the HA, um, 60 patients uh, were tested positive in public hospitals and then they were transferred to a public hospital. So is there an update uh, on the number? Uh, besides the patients, uh, we requiring renal dialysis and what kind of patients do we have? Given the shortage of bed, uh, can they uh, do uh, public hospitals uh, have space to take them? And what about the uh, public-private partnership to take to receive um, patients with um, mild symptoms? Now about uh, the shortage of oxygen, um, is it true that um, uh, there are four patients sharing the same oxygen tank? And what about uh, you are, what about um, what do you mean uh, by you are by that? What do you mean by saying that uh, you are resolving the issue? Uh, does it mean that you are procuring more oxygen tanks? I will take the first question and I will invite um, Dr. Ao to supplement. Whether recover patients uh, or patients uh, in patients confirmed should uh, get jabbed uh, or when uh, there are requirements specified under the vaccine pass scheme. Depending on the developments of the epidemic, we will adjust um, the advice on um, vaccination, and we are waiting for the um, for further advice from the uh, experts committees. In terms of a vaccine pass, there are two kinds of uh, checking: uh, active and passive checking. For passive checking, it is um, more it is easier. When um, someone is being, when a recovered patient is being subject to a passive checking by a law enforcement officer or an authorized person, uh, that would be uh, a um, valid reason. And also, in terms of um, the medical certificates, um, there is no. Um, there is no, there is not um, a particular f uh, particular kind of medical um, uh, certificates uh, for exemption under the vaccine pass uh, that you are a recovered person. So um, we recommend um, handwritten. We also accept a handwritten um, medical certificate uh, for recovered patients. Dr. Ao, for patients in a community. Um, Treatment or isolation facility uh, that would be approved for them. Some patients have received um, a message notifying them of the infection. Because of the lack of uh, space, they were not uh, taken in to these uh, facilities. We are going to make arrangements for these patients to issue them with uh, a certificate that they are recovered. And then under the vaccine pass scheme, uh, they can, uh, it can show that uh, they uh, have been infected. About uh, cases occur occurring in correctional institutions, uh, we have maintained a close liaison with the correctional services department. So far, more than 400 uh, Persons under incarceration, uh, incarceration were tested positive uh, on PCR or uh, RAT. For these cases, uh, they are under isolation in the institutions. Uh, 
inmates, uh, inmates who are also close contacts uh, are also under isolation. We have advised um, thorough cleansing and isolation uh, arrangements for them. These patients are being cared for uh, by medical officers uh, in the institutions as well as the HA. Uh, if the situation um, deteriorates, they would be sent to hospital. For patients requiring renal dia dialysis, if they are confirmed by by a private institution, they would be transferred to public hospital to perform a renal dialysis. I don't have any updates on the number. Now, our, our isolation facilities are very limited. For people requiring a blood dialysis, well, we want to provide them uh, with the services they need because we have a more um, more capacity now, and we are increasing the number of our of our uh, uh, equipment. So these patients can um, go to our uh, designated spots, and then we will provide them um, dedicated transports to take them to uh, public hospitals to uh, receive the service they need. Because of the surge of patients' number. In some wards, um, there is no central oxygen supply. That's why we have to use oxygen cylinders. Well, the restocking of um, oxygen cylinders uh, involves uh, some logistics um, process. That is what we are doing now. Last two questions. Uh, that one in the back row. What do you make of the uh, decisions by some private hospitals to transfer <laughs> kidney patients to uh, public hospitals? Do you think it was the right thing to do? And why can't uh, private hospitals take in more COVID patients? And regarding plans for the universal testing program, does the government have a rough timetable for, for it? And will it be carried out this month or next month, uh, as some experts proposed? And is the government inclined towards uh, uh, allowing people to buy food and take away during the testing program. And also, can you give us uh, a little bit more details about the uh, reported outbreaks in prison, uh, in prisons and uh, how many prisoners have been infected and how many correctional staff have been infected? And are these people uh, being isolated right now? Thank you. Well, uh, thank you for the question. May I answer the second question first? About universal compulsory testing exercise, I think it's a very important exercise for Hong Kong uh, to uh, trying to cut the current wave and uh, to reach the uh, zero case uh, target. Um, of course, it's a very massive project which needs very detailed and careful planning to achieve its purpose uh, in an orderly manner. So our chief executive has uh, repeatedly explained and reassured the public that the plan would, um, of course, be implemented uh, carefully and also addressing the need uh, for Hong Kong on the whole, for example, uh, to address its role as a important financial market, to address personal needs to uh, get medical attention or daily supplies. So that sort of detail will be announced in due course. And about the role of private hospital in carrying different types of patients and also including patients which may have been infected with COVID. So we, of course, very welcome uh, private hospitals to play a part in the entire healthcare system in this current fifth wave, whether it's uh, in taking part of, uh, I mean, in the caring of uh, non-acute and also non-COVID cases, taking over some of them from HA so that um, the capacity in HA can be shifted to care for the more severe uh, cases and also COVID patients. And of course, the other angle is on outpatient care because many people with, say, symptoms, mild symptoms such as fever, diarrhea, or they have a self-test IoT positive, and they just want a very simple medical consultation and simple medication. So I think, and I know, the private sector is going to um, discuss how they're going to go about to help in this aspect. Thank you. Um, 
about the kidney patients, we used to have a very close relationship with the private hospital in uh, delivering the cares for the kidney patients. We look forward for more, um, more help from them to ease our pressure at the moment. And uh, as I mentioned yesterday, we hope that the recovered patients, they can be returned to the private hospital for the aftercare. And um, I think um, we, we, we've been in the communication loop. Uh, Dr. L, can you talk about the outbreak in the prison? Uh, for the cases detected uh, in uh, prisons and also correctional institutions, as of last week, there are over 400 cases uh, in fattened persons in custody uh, in, un under CSD uh, so far, and some of them are tested positive by RT-PCR, while some of them are tested positive by rapid antigen test, and uh, uh, quite a number of cases were detected through the uh, uh, screening by CSD among the in, uh, persons uh, in custodies. And the CSD has implemented measures to, I to keep these cases in isolation uh, in designated facilities and as well as quarantine, uh, arranging quarantine for their close contacts, many the, the, the other uh, roommates in the same cells uh, to to put them under quarantine in designated facilities so as to stop uh, further or ongoing propagations inside the uh, princess. And also the, C the CHP has been in close liaison with the uh, CSD in implementing prevention and control measures inside the prisons. And we have provided infection control advice as well as advice on uh, quarantine arrangements for the affected persons in, in the in the prisons. And I un understand that the CSD has also uh, implemented some uh, f further measures uh, to prevent uh, the uh, prevent persons from bringing the viruses into the prisons, including regular testings for their staff, as well as stopping the social visits at the, at the, at the present moment. Last question. I'm from HK01. It's been reported that for private hospitals to receive non-COVID patients, there are conditions. For instance, a negative test result within 48 hours and to ensure that a patient can be discharged within two weeks. I'd like to know whether there are indeed such conditions. If so, what is the success rate of a referral from a public hospital to a private hospital? We appeal to the private hospitals to accept more non-COVID patients and not to impose such conditions. In fact, uh, private hospitals uh, collaborate with us in many different ways, and we have over 70 patients transferred to private hospitals. As I said, uh, they are patients requiring uh, aftercare. Of course, we very much want and welcome private hospitals to uh, do a bit more to help us. The HA headquarters has got a specific platform to discuss with private hospitals. Thank you very much for your attendance. Speaker is off mic. Are we doing that? We haven't got a specific date.